Okay, now I have my my notepad here for me to illustrate how we can resolve the issue of second normal form violation. In this specific illustration, we have the data on residence and data on program mixed with data on students. So this table is like multiple purpose table storing information on about three subject matters student specific data residence data and program data which is a huge violation this is how we resolve that violation we have said that in this case we have to move all the attributes that do not describe the table that do not depend fully on the primary key, that do not support the primary key in describing a single subject matter of student data. We need to move all of them away from that table and form them into their own table. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to remove the residence column and form that into its own table, the program column and form that into its own table. So we're basically going to have this one table decoupled into three tables like this so we're going to have student table where the primary key is student we are also going to have residence table where the primary key you can give it any name so let's call it resid for resident id and thirdly we're going to have program table with the primary key called progit for program ID progit good then all the attributes that will be added to the primary key attributes should be attributes that specifically describe the table which will make this table a single purpose table. So for the students, we understand from the original table that we're going to have first name attributes, surname attributes. If you have some other attribute that will describe specifically this table, you can add it. But you have to make sure that you do not violate second normal form principle by adding a column that describes something else other than the student. The same thing applies to the residence table. You can add attributes that describe residence and nothing else. So we can have the name of the residence. So let's say the residents are called hall. So we can add hall names. Hall names. You can add location and any any other attributes that specifically describes residence program we can add to the program ID maybe program name and other things that specifically describe the program by this we have normalized the single table into three other tables which could be made to communicate with themselves for reporting purposes all right okay so that brings us to the end of second normal form. If you have any questions, both on first normal form and second normal form, you can send comments to me on my YouTube link. You can also send a comment to me on my website, my Google website. You can also send me a WhatsApp message on the number you find on the text on the note i gave you earlier you can call me even if you want i don't have any problems at all now let's move to third normal form third normal form okay third normal form is here third normal form is saying it's actually uh, a little addition to second normal form and as you remember all of these things are procedural the second one depends on the first one the third one depends on the second one in that order 
So you have to see how they are linked up and the fact that you must understand all of them. You can understand only one. Third normal form is saying that fine. You must have achieved second normal form, but wait a minute. Can you be 100% sure that all the non-key attributes are fully functionally dependent on the primary key? Can you be sure of that? Because we have situations where the non-key attributes depend on the primary key anyway but they do so through another non-key attribute so the dependency is not direct the dependency is not in there is, is rather indirect that is what is described in database terminologies as transitive dependency in that case the dependency is not for let me repeat myself if we have we, we first say that all the non-key attributes should fully functionally depend on the primary key it is only in that fashion that we can say that the table is a single purpose table describing a single subject matter but even if we think we have achieved that we have to we have to sit back and look at things more closely. We can have a situation where one or two, one or more non key attributes depend on the primary key anyway, but they do so through another non key attribute. And that situation is referred to as transitive dependency, which is a violation. Of normalization and more specifically a violation of third normal form. Let's give ourselves an, an example. Look at look at table nine above. You will find that from the primary key, this table is supposed to store student specific data. Great. So all the other attributes like first name attribute, surname attribute, date of birth attribute, age attribute, they should be describing a student and nothing else. And of course, that's what they are doing. First name, a student should have a first name, surname, date of birth, age. So we can conclude that all the attributes are fully functionally dependent on the primary key. Another understanding of fully functionally dependent on the primary key is that it is only the primary key that we can use to uniquely identify the students in the in the in the table. And that any other value under each of these columns can be determined uniquely by the primary key. That's the technical interpretation. This is what it means. We cannot use any of the columns here apart from the primary key to uniquely identify the values under the other columns. For example, let's say we want to know the age or the date of birth of a particular student. And we are using the surname column to do that. As if, if we know the surname of a student, we can use that to know the date of birth of the student. Fine. But we have understood that in a typical large database, you can have many people with the same surname. So if you tell your database that I want the date of birth of Josh, and then you have like 50 of such say names, such face names, Josh. It means the database is going to return as many date of birth as fifty. Yes. So you see, you cannot use the same name, sorry, the first name, to determine the date of the date of birth of any particular student, because the same name is not unique among the students. We can have fifty students with the same the same first name. 
but the primary key has always been different for every student. So when we say that the non key attribute fully functionally depend on the primary key, it means that the primary key does the job of uniquely identifying all the values for each student in the table. So if I want the date of birth of Josh, I can use primary key value 1. And that is for only one Josh. It can be for only one Josh. So when it returns that date of birth, we know that it, that is associated with one particular Josh. That's the meaning. Third normal form is saying that even though we have achieved like second normal form, all the attributes are fully functionally depend on the primary key and they are describing a single purpose and that the table is a single purpose table, there could be the situation where one or more non-key attributes depend on the primary key through another non-key attribute. So it's like a non-key attribute depends on the primary key indirectly. And a technical term they use for such a situation or the technical phrase is transitive dependency. If a non-key attribute like first name, surname, date of birth, age, if a non-key attribute like any one of these attributes depend on the primary key through another non-key attribute, then that non-key attribute, which depends on the primary key through another non-key attribute, is referred to as being transitively dependent on the primary key. In other words, it is indirectly dependent on the primary key. And that is not good, that is a violation of normalization. For example, we can determine, we said that to say that a non-key attribute fully functionally depends on the primary key means that it is only the primary key that can be used to uniquely identify the values of such a non-key attribute. But look at this. We can get the, the age of Josh with primary key ID 1 from its primary key. It means if you know this primary key we can know the age of Josh number 1. If we know the primary key value 3 we can know the associated age. But you also know that we can know the age of these students also from the date of birth. So it means that this attribute called age, sorry, this attribute called age, its values could be determined from two sources. First, the primary key, it can also be determined from the date of birth. So this the values of this attribute cannot be described as fully functionally dependent on the primary key because it also depends on some other non-key attribute which is called a DOB or date of birth. And such thing is what we describe as transitive dependency and it's not good for your database design. So what you have to do is to move the column which is transitively dependent on the primary key away. Sometimes you just move it away because you can get age. You can always compute age. You don't need to store it in your table. You can always compute age from this. And that is just the solution. Let's move forward and see how we attempted resolving this breach of normalization. Okay, I think I did another example 
to store break down the concept of transitive dependency to help us understand third normal form problems. If you look at this table, this table tries to keep data on employees that an organization has. So we have an employee ID, the employee first name, the employee surname. If you take the primary key of the table, it gives you the sense that this table is meant for the purpose of keeping employee specific data. But see, it is mixed with other data. So this is a violation of second normal form. But we are not so much interested in second normal form. We just want to use the table to explain this concept of third normal form and how it could be violated. So let's assume that even though most of the non-key attributes are not fully functional dependent on the primary key, let's assume they are. And let's try to get the understanding of transitive dependency and therefore third normal form violation. If you look at employee postcode, employee region, employee city, employee district, let's assume they, they depend on the primary key. What is happening is that we can also get these values, these values encircled by the blue color by knowing the employee postcode. If you know an employee postcode, we can know the region that employee is coming from, the city that employee is coming from, and the district. So you see that we can determine the values of employee region, employee city, employee district, not only from the employee ID, but also from a non-key attribute called employee postcode. And this is an example of third normal form violation. So all of these non-key attributes, employee region, employee city, employee district, are transitively dependent on the primary key. It means they depend on the primary key through another non-key attribute. They indirectly depend on the primary key. That's what it means. And to resolve this issue means you need to move away all the transitively dependent non-key attributes from the table and form them into their own tables and link them back to the main table. So this is how we resolved the problem. So the, the, the base table or the primary table should be the employee table. We, we can infer that from the primary key, MPID. So now that table is going to be, the columns are going to be employee ID, employee first name, employee surname. Sorry, first name is repeated. So this should be MP surname. So employee surname. That's the the table. Then the other attributes that we said transitively depend on the primary key are now moved. So employee region, employee city, employee district are moved into its own table. And now we have we have to have a primary key for that table. And then we are using the employee postcode because each region, each city, each district has a unique postcode. So we can use that as a primary key and that's what is happening. So this is the primary key. Let me put it into bracket primary key.
So once this is done, then we can make the tables communicate together through the concepts of primary key and foreign key, linking them. So this is what we have done. We place a foreign key, which is a copy of the primary key of the other table into the into the table, into the main table. So we have the primary key of the the employee location table. You can call this table employee location table. We have used the primary key of the employee location table, which is M postcode. We have copied that one into the employee table. And once it comes to the employee table, it is a foreign column, a foreign attribute, or a foreign key here. What it means is that any time we enter a detail about employee, we want to link that employee to the location of that employee, and the location has already been entered in the location table. So we, we enter the location code. So this is how we, we do the linking. I told you we will do a full lecture on table relationships after normalization, so don't worry. So this is how we resolve it, by breaking that table into two tables and then linking them together. And I was also trying to further illustrate with this table. See this table? This is a table that's a table on some people who are collaborating and doing a project. And they are coming from different parts of the world. Some are coming from Ghana, others from US, others from UK, others from Nigeria, Rwanda. So they want to store information on each of these participants in the group, the country they are coming from, the ISO country code, and then the dialing code of that, that, that country. So as you see in the table, this is how traditionally it will be kept in flat file database. But this is where you get the idea of functional dependency. And by now you should be clearly identify it. Memit, which means member ID, means that this table is meant to store information specifically on the members. That will make it a single purpose table. But you see, we are violating second normal form by adding other information like country information. But we are not discussing second normal form, so you forget about any idea of second normal form. We are concentrated on third normal form, which is transitive dependency. So even if you assume it is okay to still add country specific data to the student specific data, you will realize that attributes like country name and the ISO code could be determined from the dialing code. If I know the dialing code of Ghana of 233, I can know that this, I can, I can get the value for the country by knowing the dialing code. And the, and, the, and the value for the country name is Ghana. It cannot be for any other country. And I can get the associated ISO code to be GH. So what it means is that these values of country name and ISO code transitively depend on the MEBIT, which is the primary key for the table, because it depends on the primary key of the table through the dialing code. So it depends on the primary key indirectly. In other words, it is not only the primary key MEBIT that can be used to uniquely identify the values for country name and ISO code for the country. Some other attribute, which is not a primary key attribute, which is a dialing code, can be used for that purpose. And this is transitive dependency. And the solution is that you move all the columns that are transitively dependent on the primary key to be formed into their own table. So if you look at the solution, first of all, we have tried to create this table, which is a single purpose table storing data on data specific to the members. So you see, it is, apart from the primary key, we have only have first name and surname. Then we move the country specific data to a different table, which you can give it 
maybe country as the name for the t table and you will see that we have the, the dialing code is unique among all the countries so we can use that as a primary key as a unique identifier so we have the dialing code as the primary key which can we can use to identify the ISO code for the country the country name and a way to link the two tables together is to use a foreign key inside one of the table and link them with a the primary key you already know about that and I said we also do a full lecture on that so that's how you resolve third normal form problems this is the end of the lecture on normalization from first normal form up to third normal form and in terms of summary this is what we have attempted to understand Relational database uses multiple tables. Each table is supposed to store data on a single subject matter. And therefore, you will have many tables in relational database design than traditional way we keep data. If you have to get your tables normalized, you go through steps of normalization called normal forms for the purposes of our lessons we have discussed the first three of the normal forms first normal form second normal form and third normal form first normal form talks about the idea of primary key every record in a table should be uniquely different from other records and you do that by having a dedicated column which has unique values to create differentiation among the records. First normal form, you should also avoid the problem of repeating columns or repeating values. Second normal form says that make sure all the attributes you have put in a table specifically describe that subject that the table is supposed to keep data on in other words make sure that all the other attributes called the non key attributes are fully dependent on the primary key because the function of the primary key is inferred from the function of the table or the purpose of the table is inferred from the primary key And third normal form is saying that if you have achieved second normal form, make sure that some non key attribute is not dependent on the primary key indirectly. And we have discussed how, if you have any of these violations, you have to resolve them. Thank you very much. This is the end of the lecture. If you have any questions, you can channel them to me through my YouTube channel, my Google site, or my phone number, either by WhatsApp or by call. I don't have any problem. Bye.